Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of the Junk Drawer Show Sports Edition, where we talk about our NFL podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoy the episode. We're doing a new format where we talk about subjects and kind of break them down into smaller chunks so that it's a little easier for you guys to digest. If you have anything in particular you'd like for us to talk about or weigh in on, uh, fantasy football questions, facts, figures, anything like that, let us know down in the comments, guys, and enjoy. Fevers, we got some quarterback talk. Yes. And this is the part of the show that I think I am most excited about because I can speak to it quite well, as can Mike. Um, Andy Dalton, for $3 million, he was cut by the Bengals. It's the Joe Burrow show up there now. He's not going to sit. They're not going to sit him, obviously. He's starting day one. Dalton goes to Dallas, which feels kind of unconventional. And it comes out today that the Dallas Cowboys offered Dak five years, $175 million. Now, we don't know anything about guaranteed money. We don't know what was promised to him, what incentives there are, anything like that. Or if they're back, you know, backloading the contract, whatever. But that would put him in line with Russell Wilson for being the highest paid quarterback ever. Ever. Wow. 35 a year. 35 a year. Mike. Dak Prescott said he wants north of 45 mil. North of 45 mil. So we're talking 46, 47, 48 in Wait, that fifth year. 40? 45. He wants north of 45 in the fifth year, which is we're talking 46, 47, 48. If he's going to sign that deal with Dallas, that also probably bumps the AAV up in those first four years to closer to 40, probably 37, 38. Does Dak Prescott deserve this money? I think it's questionable that he offered uh, that he deserves the contract that he's offered in general. Don't get me wrong. I think Dak Prescott is a good quarterback, but I, I, I still think making him the highest paid quarterback in the NFL is um, a stretch. Uh, I just don't think that he's got that elite level to put them over. I think that he's got a better team built around him to make him look good. Uh, obviously they have a strong running game with Ezekiel Elliott. Um, they've been known for always having a very good offensive line to keep him upright. Uh, and now he's got two good receivers there in, uh, in obviously he's got um, Amari Cooper. And then I believe he got CD lamb was who they got in the draft. Correct. Um, so <clears throat> I think that they're and gal. Gallup's yeah, good too. Yeah, yeah, Michael Gallup's also a very good receiver. Um, I I just don't think highest paid quarterback in the NFL, Dak Prescott's in that conversation for me. Um, but this is the thing: is are you going to go with Andy Dalton or uh, are you going to reset and let him test the market uh, if you don't re-sign him? So uh, they're kind of stuck in a very difficult situation um, when it comes to the north of 45 fuck no um god no there's one quarterback in the league that i would pay that to and that's patrick mahomes and nobody else um so patrick mahomes deserves that money uh dak prescott for me doesn't do it so craig before your response i want to say dak prescott in the last i think he's been starting for four years i had it up on my screen and i switched off to go to something else he's got the seventh highest win percentage in the nfl and he's tied for second in wins with Russell Wilson at 40. The only person ahead of them is Tom Brady with 47. Does that change? You're, you've been giving me a lot of no's, a lot of head shakes. What are your feelings? Obviously, this is the first time you've heard these numbers, the first time yeah, you've heard I this. I didn't know they were that big. I didn't know they were they that were big. Because the quarterback market is obscene now. Because like last year, there was, I believe, Goff and Wentz both got big deals. And it was like head shakingly big for what we know they're capable of then ryan Tannehill, who i you guys know i like him but the deal doesn't make sense i mean it so the something's about to happen in the market right if we look at the nfl like a stock market right are we on some verge that's sustainable well is dak the breaking point does a team finally say no we will not pay number one money to a not number one person if pat mahomes is setting a market and that's 36, 37. What the 45 is ludicrous. I think he's just trying to throw something out there, the agent, to try to have like, we shoot for the moon and fall among the stars and say, okay, fine, we'll take the 35. But he, I'm with Mike, and you know, I don't like agreeing with Mike. 35 is not the correct money for him and for his production. That's 
Russell, Aaron Rodgers, like very rare territory. And the only reason Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson aren't there is they're too young. They didn't do the second deal yet. Goff and Wentz showed you what a second deal could look like. And they're even like barely you're arguing to get them in that top 10 conversation. You're having an argument with yourself about it and they're getting paid that much. So Dak so, could accidentally get this money is what I'm saying because of the market, but not 45. No, for, for sure. He could end up getting the money. So I will say, I think one of the big differences is, you know, Craig continuing on from your point, Goff and Wentz, Wentz did not win his Super Bowl, but Goff has been to one and yes. Wentz willed his team to That's the playoffs and good. then died. Right, and they're not going to be paid nearly what this 35 is. They're not even there, and they got big deals. They got big deals on low low time in the league, if you will. Low, Not a whole lot of proven it. And the same year Dak was drafted. Do you think the Cowboys are paying the price for not locking Dak up last year, letting his deal run out? You nailed it. You nailed it. They They probably could have got a better scenario, but the more these deals came out, the more him and his agent said, yeah, I'll do a few more chunky soup ads and they'll just have to pay me. They will have to pay me. I'm a marketable guy. So I have some I have some other stats here for you guys. Uh, in 2016, when Dak broke into the league, so this will be his fourth year. Uh, in 2016, he was five and three against teams with a uh, winning percentage over 500, which isn't bad, which isn't bad. Since then, he's been five and 11 with 23 touchdowns and 18 turnovers with 40 sacks. Yeah. In the five games he played without Ezekiel Elliott due to suspension, he is two and three with a one to one touchdown to interception ratio. He's thrown five touchdowns, five interceptions, and he only had one game over 200 passing yards. He's poop. <laughs> what? So that's what you were saying. That's those are those are numbers, and I want to get your your feelings, Mike, on on how those make you feel. Being that again, this is a man tied for second in the last three or four years of the, in the NFL with forty wins. Yeah, well, it 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 makes you kind of raise an eyebrow as to what is the Cowboys team going to be this year, because they had this type of offense that they were running under Jason Garrett, where they ran the ball a lot and ran it well for two quarters and then they decided to just start throwing the ball and yeah. that's where he goes ahead and makes his money whereas now you have a mike mccarthy offense where mike mccarthy with aaron Rodgers, it, it it's that we never really relied on the run game because we're the packers and we don't know how to draft so we're just going to go ahead and have our our gunslinger quarterback just fucking chuck it like uncle rico i could throw it over that mountain like that's what the, that's what mike mccarthy nice. was able to Napoleon do reference. Thank you. Um, big fan of Gardner Minshew. Uh, <laughs> not, anyways, <laughs> it really is. It, it's just like it was his like younger, younger cousin or something like that. Um, no, but that's the thing is with this Mike McCarthy offense, can Mike McCarthy awaken the Aaron Rodgers in Dak Prescott? We're going to have to see because that's really what's going to determine if he's worth the money. Because if I recall correctly, uh, do they have him on the franchise tag this year? Because I think they do. They do, and it is unsigned. He did not sign that he, shit. He well, could that's be because you They're not going to want him to. on a contract. It'll ruin he's, it. He's not going to play. He's going to hold out if he doesn't get a deal. He's going to be a high I don't think Dallas is going to bite on that. I, don't, I, I think they signed they Dalton as this. I think they Backup signed Dalton plan? to make him realize, okay, sign that franchise tender. We'll talk in a year. Yeah. Let's see what you're worth. Even that franchise tag's worth like 30, isn't it? It's an it's a nice Something one. Something like that. 31.4. So the cap. more more numbers, because I like I like numbers. I'm a s I'm a big stat guy. And because he would be essentially tied with Russell for AAV. It's he'd get make more money longer than Russell, but he they would both be tied at that 35. In Russell's first three seasons, he went 36 and 12 with 62 uh, touchdowns, 26 interceptions, 11 rushing touchdowns, and eight fumbles lost. Dak has gone. Uh, he went 32 and 16, not as good. 57 touchdowns, 25 interceptions, 18 rushing touchdowns, which is more, but also 13 fumbles lost, still more. In that time, however, 
Russell Wilson had two Super Bowl appearances. And, and I think, and he won one. And I think. Would have won the other if it wasn't for Pete Carroll. That's true. I think he was also surrounded with less talent offensively than Dak Prescott has been. I You cannot argue that Marshawn Lynch, when he was in Seattle, is at the same level that Ezekiel Elliott's been since he's been in the league. But the receivers is a, is a different. And the receivers big, is big a complete dip. nightmare. Big, big, big complete. dip. Tyler Lockett's the number one there, and that's not a good situation. What does that even mean? Exactly. Golden Tate was was the guy for a minute. Oh, Doug Baldwin was the guy for a minute. Baldwin. And they were never – he threw to the shell of Jimmy Graham – for 10 seconds. Oh my gosh, and that did not work out. It no, was, it was a big club. I was that wasn't a, even was the Super Bowl that. years. No, that was, no, I think, no, the I year after the, the Patriot loss. So, also, postseason career, I just pulled the career numbers. Dak is 1-2. and two. He's won one playoff game. He's got five touchdowns, two picks, two rushing touchdowns, He's no fumbles lost. Money. He's going to get this money. He doesn't deserve it. God damn it. Russell, 9-6, and six, 23 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 3 rushings, 2 fumbles lost. I don't see where this money lines up. I don't see it. It doesn't. They should obviously pay him $1 million less and sponsor this show for the other <laughs> million dollars. I agree with that. I think yeah, they I mean, should do understand that. it. I would not really very much enjoy any sponsorship from Jerry Jones, but uh, if he's if he's showing up money, I will first. take it. <laughs> Spillane works for free, even if money shows up one day. <laughs> he doesn't feel no, no, comfortable no. with the sponsorship. No, for him, it needs to be Miracle Whip or something super puffy. <laughs> <laughs> That's your Miracle Whip face. Oh, I hate Pat. That. Freeze frame the shit out of that. Put the Miracle Whip logo right <laughs> under here and make that the title card of the video and say, what happens with Miracle Whip? You'll get 500 views. <laughs> People will just think something happened with that face that he was making. Uh, I think you're onto something. I think that the the Miracle Whip searches on YouTube are probably on the rise They're obscene. right now. Obscene. Uh, so oh, I, I think that in my mind, though, the more likely scenario here is that they decide to go ahead and let Dak sit out if he doesn't sign it. And um, I, I have well, a feeling if, if they're going to be, if they're going to be stern on that number of he wants 45 or North of 45, um, if Andy Dalton plays well, they'll let him walk, you know, and that'll be interesting to see if they do let him walk because of the fact that what he's trying to do is he's trying to reset the market at quarterback, uh, but you're not a time. talented enough quarterback no. to reset the market. So that's the thing is it, it makes no sense. The quarterback that's resetting the market is Lamar Jackson is Patrick Mahomes. It's one of those two who are going to get that number that exceeds 40. It's not going to be a Dak Prescott. And I think what's, what we're going to start seeing here more likely is going the route of the NBA these quarterbacks, even though they're going to be getting these contracts worth X amount of dollars, they're not going to sign deals longer than three years anymore. They want to keep seeing if they can reset that market, keep getting that more money as more money That's comes into the NFL. That's very so, interesting because that has that has done a thing to the uh, NBA. Oh, and yeah. It changed a, a superstar mentality, kind of moving things around of how money and the money comes in. You, do, you think that that could be the situation on the quarterback market – do, but do you see that with other skill players? Do you see any of that NBA trickle down of how guys are starting to align, get their money together, or that doesn't work in the NFL? I don't know if it's going to work in the NFL just because certain skill positions are not valued. Like running backs, but running backs, you're, you're, you're not getting anything. But they're so uh, important. That's what uh, that that just makes no sense. That's the thing is the only time you're going to do it is if you're a big game wide receiver or a top tier tight end. If you're a slot receiver, you're not getting that because of how the likelihood of injury due to contact going across the middle, you know, like no, you nailed it. The setting of the market is going to get weird in quarterback because they're all going to want to be like, well, I'm at 31 and this guy's this Yahoo's getting 39. All right. This contract needs to be shorter so that I can keep putting up 4,500 yards, 5,000 yards. Uh, we're just going to get more frustrated as fans at how much they're getting paid. Does anyone benefit more from these contract talks than Patrick Mahomes? No, no. Maybe Just Lamar Jackson. Lamar, him and Lamar. Him and Lamar are sitting there thinking Deshaun Watson's like outside that door looking in outside the window, like waving. 
because he's not there. He's not because I, I would like and Mike made a very good point, And maybe you should record that because I don't like what I even said. It sounded like <laughs> uh, uh, is the you, you can't you're not a market setter unless you're like top three. And maybe it's only top two that you should be a, a resetting of the market, like what Russell and Aaron Rodgers do for the you know what I mean? Like they're getting more than Tom Brady. Tom Brady brings his six rings and someone can only carve out 30 million for him. He's Tom Brady. Right. So these young guns are going to be the. I, I think you're right. It's, if if Mahomes isn't the one and Lamar's not the one to set it at 40, they have terrible agents. Yeah, no, I agree 100 percent. They have to be the ones that reset the market. There's just too much skill, too much talent in specifically what those two quarterbacks do. Too much potential. Like, they stay healthy. If that's a scary look, if that's 15 years in the league, like, you better get better. All you other teams out there better get better and better look after guys, go after more guys like Tua. Go after these more versatile guys, even if they have a few risks here and there injury-wise, because the, the, the position is changing again from yeah. just air it out to coming back to dynamic, d- damn it, I don't know if that's a word, dy- dynamicism, but it was like to be dynamic, to be able to, the things Pat Mahomes and, and Lamar do, and to a lesser degree, Deshaun Watson and Russell and Aaron actually do those, but these guys do it more because they're younger. That's a very exciting future of the league for me as a fan. It's just, that's why I'm so jazzed about Tua. I, I think his ceiling is at least in that space. Well, that's the thing for me is you look at, uh, I'm thinking of what I grew up on as far as the NFL going like through my teen years and everything is that the AFC was always Colts and Patriots, yep. Colts, Patriots, Colts, Patriots the entire time. AFC is about to be Chiefs, Ravens, Chiefs, Ravens, Chiefs, Ravens. And oh, again, the only way that it's not is if the agents fuck both Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. <laughs> it's the only way that that happens because you know that those teams are stupid if they let either of them try and get out of Kansas town. city has to roll him out the fattest contract, but also like name and streets after the joint and everything, because th- th- they were an original franchise. What nearly right. One of the first, no, they were, and they didn't played win, the Super Bowl one. and they hadn't had a Super Bowl since like 50 the a- years. The AFC championship trophy is named after their fucking owner. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like Holmes is a big deal in Kansas city already. And when this con, if I'm them, I'm even giving offering him a deal sooner. But I know that's not how the business works. But gosh, you you want to imp- get more ticket sales? You you lock that boy up. It's not I mean, how the business works, but I'm sure that they were like, hey, if we were hypothetically to offer you 42 million for the next five years, you good? He'd be yeah, like, be yeah. Yeah, I mean, offer the first 200 million dollar plus contract in NFL history. That's got to be it, there, right? I mean, I, I, uh, I mean, so. I, I'm sure that Kansas City is probably a place that still has a blimpy or something like that. They got to be naming sandwiches after him. Like oh, my some... God. oh, my God. Yeah. So was... last last thing about the, the Prescott thing, because we're getting a little too into Mahomes. Um, is Dak Prescott? He's so much better. He's so much better. <laughs> I love Patrick Mahomes. I have yes. a pat. I, I got my Mahomes card right back there. He's got a little little touch of jurors. Um, so. Is Dak Prescott a top 12 quarterback in the NFL, Mike? Top 12? Um, I would say he's he's there, yeah. I, I would say he's probably a top 12 quarterback. But my asterisk is he was a top 12 quarterback under Jason Garrett when his team was healthy. So is he going to be a top 12 quarterback in a new system under Mike McCarthy? That's what I still want to see. Because... Under McCarthy, if things go as well as they did in Green Bay for a few of those years, he's a top five quarterback if things work out well and things fall in his fall in his favor. If they don't, he might be around that 12, 11, 12, 13 area. Um, but I would say as of right now, what he's done, I would say he is a top 12 quarterback as much as it hurts to say. So um, I'll counter that with I don't think he's as talented as Aaron Rodgers is. And I think Aaron Rodgers hid a lot of Mike McCarthy's flaws in his ability to chuck the rock. So I don't even think if he does well in the Cowboys system, will he ever be a top five quarterback? But that's just my opinion. Um, I don't necessarily disagree with you. Um, More so kind of playing devil's advocate on the point in the fact that if it goes well, I think he could do that. But I don't 
Look at you waffling. Commit. Craig, is Dak Prescott a top 12 quarterback in the NFL? No. He's a middle of the packer. And that's the thing. And that means, yeah, your ceiling's like 12, right? 10. 10 is your ceiling. If I'm committing you to middle of the pack, you're somewhere between 10 and 20. And that's where he is. I don't even know that at his best he gets out of that because there's guys with higher ceilings than him. He has shown the flaws. You listed some stats that make it difficult to put him in that territory. So I don't have him in the top 12 currently, and he's got to prove quite a bit. I'm putting guys like Goff and Wentz over him even because of where they've been and what they've done. I mean, I will say the man did throw for almost 5,000 yards this season, which is very impressive. Not a lot of guys been in that rarefied air. That, that game is changing. The amount of throwing changed so much that you got Jameis Winston's leading the league in passing yards. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know that raw yardage without a, a bit more depth. In the context of Drew Brees, the raw yardage, it doesn't tell the story. You've got touchdowns to back it, wins, and a championship. I don't know that we can rely on raw passing yardage in this new air it out era of the NFL. So I'll, I'll ask you a follow-up to this, and then we can move on. Um, how would you rank Dak Prescott in regards to Andy Dalton? How much more are you getting with Dak than you are with Andy? The problem for me and, and why I think they brought Andy in is to check up Dak a little bit on this big money ask. Because I think Dak might only be a 1.25 multiplier, 1.3 multiplier on him. Because Dalton never got to be what he even could be because he went to Cincinnati. And they really didn't have a lot going on. The shell of A.J. Green, he's not been the same. Really a all-over-the-place run game that got okay recently, and we're not even sold on that. Like, I don't think Dalton's as bad as his resume currently looks. And Dallas certainly doesn't think so either to bring him in as a scare tactic to get Dak to get off this ridiculous rare air that he thinks he's in. Uh, it's hard to that, di- uh, Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's hard to disagree with, with the numbers that Dak currently has put up. And, and, you know, I, I even feel like, and, and this is going to sound strange because he hasn't had CD lamb for even a season yet, but with the talent that's been around Dak Prescott, I feel like he's perpetually underachieved. And I feel like, the team around him obviously has something to do with that. It's a team game. You know, he's not going to always will them to victory, but at some point you have to put the team on your back and start winning games. And he's very good at doing that in the regular season. And he's very good at not doing it in the, in the playoffs. So, so key, which is where I was going to say, that's the one difference that we got between Dak Prescott and Andy Dalton is at least Dak Prescott does have one playoff win. Andy sure. Dalton does not. Um, he he is, doesn't, but he was he a is, Bengali, and the Bengalis don't win stuff since they went to the should have won. Four times. They should have won that game against Pittsburgh, and then Vontaze Burfitt decided he was going to try and kill a Steeler, and the whole thing he did sh- kill a switched after that. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so. Look at him now. 